Let's take a look at one of my favorite passages from John, John 7, 37 through 39, which contains the verse, as scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. First, a little detective work will reveal that there's a big question about how this passage should actually be translated. Here's the New American Bible. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him. He said this in reference to the spirit that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no spirit yet because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Catholic RSV and the NRSV are both similar to this, New American. However, look at the New English translation, or the NET. On the last day of the feast, the greatest day, Jesus stood up and shouted, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. Just as the scripture says, from within him will flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were going to receive. For the Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, whose belly does the water come out of? Is it the believer's belly or Jesus's? The Greek simply says his, but you'll notice that we could understand the passage either way. Living waters from the believer's heart or from Jesus's. The first point to make here is this. Every Bible translation is an interpretation. If you depend on translations, you have to depend on the judgment of your translator. So a good practice is to compare many different translations or even critical commentaries to at least get a feel for the different interpretive possibilities. An even better idea is to take CDU's Biblical Greek course. It's not that hard, trust me. Would I lie to you? <laughs> we have no choice but to look at the text closely in light of the whole gospel and the interpretive tradition to weigh the various options. Well, what are the reasons of thinking that it's the believer whose heart or belly will give the living water? Well, there's basically five reasons for this view. Reason one, thematic coherence with John chapter four. If you were reading carefully and you remember what Jesus said to the woman at the well, he says, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. This water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now this would fit nicely with the believer's belly being the place where the living waters will flow. Reason two, thematic coherence with John chapter six. Interpreting Jesus as the one whom the living water comes from means we have to treat the one who believes as being synonymous with the one who thirsts. But if we were reading carefully in just the last chapter, John 6, 3, 635 says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Well, that would seem to suggest that the one who is thirsty and the one who believes are not actually intended to be the same person, which means that the one who believes is seems to be the person who has the belly full of living water. Reason three, thematic coherence with John chapter 20. In this chapter, Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on the disciples and tells them, those sins you forgive are forgiven, those sins retained are retained. This perhaps hints at the reality that the Spirit will be something that the disciples of Jesus 
can not only possess, but can confer on other people. And we've already seen many reasons for thinking that the water in John is actually a sign for the Holy Spirit. This fits with the believer having the living waters within him. Reason 4. Tradition. P66 of the famous Bodmer Papyrus is a fragmented but fairly complete copy of the Gospel of John that goes all the way back in all likelihood to the late 2nd century. Ancient texts like this didn't have that much punctuation, but occasionally they did. And the punctuation of this verse suggests that the ancient scribe copying this put a period at the end of the word me, which would suggest that this scribe was interpreting the one who believes in me to be the one from whom the living waters would flow. Reason five, tradition. The Eastern Church Fathers, going all the way back to origin, including John Chrysostom, Athanasius, and Cyril Jerusalem, understood that while Jesus is the ultimate source of the water, the rivers in John 7, 37 through 39 flow from the believer. But what are the reasons for thinking that Jesus is the one whom the waters of living, the rivers of living water flow from and not the believer? Again, there's five reasons for this. Reason number one, the puzzle of scripture. Jesus' words suggest an Old Testament scripture is being cited here. As the scripture says, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. But there's no Old Testament scripture that says out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. But there are several scriptures that speak of water flowing out of the temple. The best one of these is Ezekiel 47, 1 and 2. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced the east. The water was flowing down below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me by, out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the other gate that faces toward the east. And behold, water was trickling out on the south side. This brings us to reason two for holding Jesus to be that source of the living water thematic coherence with John 2 and John 4. We've already seen that Jesus' body is a temple in John 2, both fulfilling God's promises for the temple and replacing the temple. In John 4.21 also, Jesus tells the Samaritan woman that neither on Mount Gerizim nor Mount Zion will people worship. Worship will no longer be so temple-centric, but will be based on spirit and truth because Jesus will have given the spirit and will have supplanted the function of the old temple. With Jesus as the temple, it's more natural then to read Jesus as the one from whom the living water rivers will flow, not the believer. Reason three, thematic coherence with John chapters 14 through 16. In these chapters, Jesus promises repeatedly in John 14, in John 15, and John 16 that he will give the Holy Spirit. And we've already seen many connections, both in the Old Testament Gospel of John between spirit and water. This fits better with the rivers of living water coming from Jesus than it does from them coming from the believer. Reason four thematic coherence with John chapter 19. In this most famous version of the crucifixion, John describes water and blood flowing from the side of Jesus at the point that he died, which means many things, but among these it means the beginning of the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Since John 7:39 explicitly tells us that Jesus was referring to the coming of the Holy Spirit, should we then not take this passage as referring to Jesus' gift of the Holy Spirit, which begins at Calvary, more than the believer's possession of the Holy Spirit? Reason five, again, tradition. Just as the Eastern Church Fathers were apt to take the passage as referring to the believer, certain Western Church Fathers, like Cyprian and Ambrose, understood the living waters as flowing from Jesus and not from the believer. Well, so there you have it. You've heard the case for 
both readings based on the text of John, the Old Testament, and the interpretive tradition. Those of you who want to do even more spade work on this should go to the CDU library and visit EBSCO. Type in John 37 and see that there's at least half a dozen full text articles there just waiting for your perusal. That's what they exist for as theology students. But I've talked enough. I'd like you to tell me now what you think of John 7, 37 through 39 in the space below. Is the passage about the believer's possession of the living water or Jesus' gift of the living water as the new temple?